a great servant passage in Isaiah is found in Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. In this great text, <clears throat> many feel that this, at one level, is referring to Isaiah or a righteous remnant in Israel. It is my understanding that if it is referring to Isaiah, at one level, he becomes a type, ultimately, of Jesus Christ, who fulfills this in vivid detail <clears throat> at his trial and prior to the cross. It looks at the suffering <clears throat> that Jesus Christ went through in anticipation of Isaiah chapter 53, the intensive suffering in the vicarious atonement of our Lord for our sins. In this text, uh, it says that the Lord has given me, <clears throat> or has given to me, uh, the tongue of those that are taught that I should know how to sustain the weary with words. And he wakens, or he wakens me morning by morning, and he wakens, or uh, my ear, to hear as one that is taught. And I'm thinking of how the Lord, Jesus Christ, beautifully <clears throat> responds to the Father <clears throat> and, is, uh, and makes the statement, not my will, but yours be done, in an obedient response. This goes further in verse 5 uh, when it says, The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither did I turn away backward. Again, Jesus in the garden, crying out, Not my will, but yours be done. He has come to fulfill his work upon the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus did not turn back from that uh, offering of the Father. He also makes the statement, No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down. So he willingly went through the cross on our behalf. As we move into verse 6 and 7, we then see the beating and the spitting that Jesus Christ experienced on our behalf. It says in verse 6, Gave natati le makim, u le chayai le mo ratim, penai lo his tarti miklimot verok. My back I gave to those who smite me, and my cheeks to them that make bald the, be the beard, or that plucked out the hair. My face I did not hide from reproaches and spittle, or spitting. Notice in this text, the word gave comes from the noun gave, meaning back, and we have a pronominal suffix, first common singular in the Hirik Yod. So my back, Natati, I have given to those that smite me. Natati is a cow perfect, first common singular from the root Natan. Notice it's a pay noon verb, and the second noon, uh, or, or the final noon of the verb has assimilated into the top, showing the doggish forte in the uh, final top. So I gave my back, le makim, to those that smite me. Uh, notice the lamed here is just your inseparable preposition, followed by the participle. Uh, this is <coughs> the hyphial uh, participle, masculine plural, from the root naka to smite. Notice the noon has assimilated into the 
the cough, <clears throat> and the final hay has dropped out. We have an AI vowel pattern with the mem indicating a hyphil participle. So to those that would smite me or cause me to be smitten. This is followed in the next phrase with the words U lechayai lemo ratim. U lechayai is my cheeks. We would render this my and my cheeks to those that literally make bald. Make bald understood here the beard. U is a conjunction meaning uh, and uh, historically vele uh, would not uh, continue in in the uh, bob with the shiva because in that environment it changes to a shurik in in the conjunction here so u lechayai notice the lechayai is from lechi meaning uh, cheek and this is a dual <coughs> form in Hebrew, lechayayim. Here, however, uh, this dual form is in construct with the pronominal suffix I, which is the plural pronominal <coughs> suffix, first common singular, that is put on to this dual form of, of uh, lechi, which would have been lechayim in the du dual form. And so the meme, the mem has dropped out, and we have lechayi, and then we add the i as the pronominal suffix, lechayi being in construct with i. <coughs> so my cheeks, to those who make bald. Notice uh, again, we have the... Uh, inseparable preposition in the Lamed, two, uh, and then we have the cal active participle, masculine plural, from the root marat, to make bald. Notice the O class vowel gives it away as a cal active participle, and the im shows that it is a masculine plural. So they, uh, to my cheeks, they make bald, meaning they pluck out the beard and make uh, his face bald, which was the worst kind of uh, shame that one could be put to uh, would be to have the beard being plucked out uh, from one's face. And then the text says, Penai lo histarti mikelimot virok My face I have not hidden from reproaches and spittle. Uh, my face comes from panai. <clears throat> Notice the word is panayim, a dual form, in the uh, plural or dual ending. And here it's in construct again with the pronominal suffix i, which uh, goes to a dual form here. Uh, and so my face lo histarti. Notice the lo is the negative particle followed by histarti which is your hyphil uh, perfect first common singular from the root satar to hide literally to cause to hide. Notice the uh, t ending shows that we are looking at a first common uh, singular suffix onto this root and the hay gives it away as a hyphil. So I did not cause my face to hide from mikkelimot, from reproaches. Notice the min here, or the mim here, uh, is a preposition from, and the noon has assimilated into the cough. So we have min kelimot becoming mikkelimot. And the Kelly Mot uh, is, is a plural noun, feminine uh, plural. Notice the Ot ending from Kelly Ma, meaning reproach. So I did not hide my face from reproaches, the rock, and spittle. 
Notice the conjunction, the vav, uh, followed then by the noun rok, which means spittle or spitting. It is striking that in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, that we begin to hear this text, I believe, fulfilled by our Lord Jesus Christ in the uh, prayer in Gethsemane. Jesus then says, when he came a little ways, he fell upon his face, praying and saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you. And we've seen in the previous uh, verse, verse 5, that he did not turn away from the Father's will, but came to fulfill it. Then, as we look at verse 67 of Matthew chapter 26, we have these words. And this takes place when Jesus was before the council, the Jewish uh, court. It says, Then they spit into his face, and they buffeted him, they hit him, and they slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, Christ, who is the one who smote you? And so after the arrest of Jesus, when he went to the council, we see the very fulfillment of this text here, where it says, I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. And uh, they hit Jesus, they smite him, and they spit upon him. This is further seen again in Matthew chapter 27, verse 26, where it says, then they led him to Barabbas, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him over to be crucified. Uh, so again, notice, I'm sorry, then they, he released to them Barabbas, speaking of uh, Pilate here. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him over to be crucified. Notice again the beating, the scourging, that Jesus went through. And uh, then furthermore, we see the same taught in chapter 27 of Matthew, verse 30, where the text reads, And when they had spit upon him, they took a reed and were smiting him uh, in the head. Here are the uh, so Roman soldiers mocking Jesus and laughing him laughing at him uh, prior to his crucifixion. So this text is an amazing prophetic text that moves beyond Isaiah and has its ultimate fulfillment in Jesus Christ upon uh, in his trial, in, in the mocking that he went through, the reproaches, as well as the... Uh, beard being plucked out, being spit upon, all of these things and uh, being beaten find their fulfillment in Jesus Christ, who is the final suffering servant who suffers on our behalf. And this text anticipates Isaiah 53, where Jesus uh, becomes our vicarious atonement. All of us like sheep go astray, but the Lord caused to land upon him the iniquity of all of us. And then in verse 7, it goes on to say, the Adonai Elohim, Ya Azar Li. But my Lord, or my, my, my Lord God, he will help me. Uh, notice uh, Va. Is the preposition or is the conjunction and, and then we have the Adonai, meaning my Lord, looking at God the Father, and notice the uh, pronominal suffix ending in the comets followed by the Yod. So my Lord, and then we have Yod He Bab He, but the vowel pointing uh, with the Chatef Segol. 
and the I class valve under the bob and the O class over the bob uh, tells us that the Masoretes want us to pronounce this Elohim. So my Lord Elohim, looking again at the help that the Father will bring to the Son, to Jesus in his death, my Lord Elohim, Ya'azorli, will help me. And notice, Ya'azorli is from the root Azar, to help. It is the Cal imperfect third masculine singular from Azar, followed by the uh, pronominal, uh, the, the, uh, the pronoun le, and the hirik yod, pronominal suffix, first common singular. So, will help toward me, or will help me. And then, it reads, al kain lo nik lamati. Wherefore, I shall not be confounded. And notice, al kain uh, is to be read together as a conjunction, wherefore, as a result of the Lord's help, I will not be confounded. Lo is the negative particle, not, and nik lamati is from the root kalam, to be confounded. Notice the noon prefix shows us that we are looking at a nifal, and the t uh, indicates that it's a first common singular. So we have a nifal perfect, first common singular, from the root kalam. Wherefore, because the Lord will help me, I will not be confounded. And uh, how true that is, as we look at Jesus Christ, who gains the victory over death and sin as a result of his obedience uh, to the cross. And I'm thinking of Philippians chapter 2. Because he was obedient unto death, God also has highly exalted him, given him the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It means that he is the sovereign and he has been elevated and everyone will have to recognize him either as their eternal savior or their eternal judge. But he is sovereign either as savior or judge. And then we go on. Uh, I will not be confounded. Wherefore, al kain samti fanai kahalamish. Therefore, and again we have the conjunction al kain read together uh, upon thus or wherefore samti. I have set my face. Notice samti is a uh, cow perfect, first common singular from the root seem, to set or place. So I have set uh, my face, and panai uh, is from panayim, a dual form again, but the eem drops out, and we have panai uh, in construct, or the, the pay and the noon here, in construct with the I, the plural pronominal suffix ending first common singular. So I have set my face as a flint. Kahalamish. And notice ka is a preposition, meaning as. Uh, it has the definite article as the flint or as a piece of the flint or as a as as flint. And notice the halamish is the noun that simply means flint, uh, that which is uh, expressive of this determination that cannot be broken, like flint is hard and cannot be broken. So I've set my face as a flint. I've placed it so to fulfill the will of the Father. I believe uh, Jesus, uh, as we look at the New Testament, is saying, And he has come, therefore, to carry out that great work of redemption. So I have set my face as a flint, 
And I know, ve'ida ki lo evosh, I know that I will not be ashamed. Notice ve'ida is uh, from the root yada, and the yod has dropped out, and therefore we have compensatory lengthening under the aleph, which is showing a first person common singular uh, prefix to the verb yada. So it's simply a cow imperfect, first common singular from the root ada. And so, and I know. And notice the vob here is a vob conversive. It's turning this imperfect into a past. Uh, and we again see a comments with compensatory lengthening under the vob since the olive could not take a doggish forte. Historically, the uh, conjunction here would have been vav, and the second vav elides or drops out, and because of the aleph being a guttural, so we move from a pothok to a comets in what we call again compensatory lengthening. So, in essence, uh, we have uh, a verb here that is a weak verb, a peyod verb, where the yod has dropped out. And where the aleph could not take a doubling, we have compensatory lengthening under this vav, which is functioning as a vav consecutive. So, I will, or I, or excuse me, I know, putting it into the past, that I will not be ashamed. Key is just your conjunction, followed by the particle, negative particle, lo. And then we have the verb a vosh. Evosh is the cow imperfect first common singular from vosh, meaning to be ashamed. So wherefore, I will not be ashamed. Again, what a beautiful uh, picture of victory here that is culminated in verses 8 and 9 when the text says, He is near who justifies me. Who will contend with me? Let him stand up. Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Behold, they all shall wax old like a garment, and the moth shall eat them up. And so... Uh, when we look at this, we see the ultimate victory of the suffering servant, our Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> who was heard by the Father because of his uh, piety. And in being heard, he was delivered. It is interesting as we look at the uh, suffering of our Lord when he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At the beginning of his suffering upon the cross, then we have the statement, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And so the beating and the suffering, as we could say the prelude to the cross, is now finalized in the victory on the cross. And he was heard, he was delivered by the Father who heard him and who responded to his uh, prayer. It is significant. We see the same background in Psalm 22 where the psalmist cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he petitions the Lord after the lament of that psalm for help by concluding I will declare your name among the brethren in the midst of the assembly I will praise you which again looks at the great deliverance that was given to Jesus the psalmist becoming a type of Jesus Christ uh, fulfilled again uh, fulf seeing fulfillment again in his resurrection where he was heard and declared the name of the Father to uh, the disciples, to his brethren. 
It is interesting that the writer of Hebrews, alluding to this background of Christ's suffering and then being heard, says in verse 7 of Hebrews chapter 5, who in the days of his flesh uh, offered up petitions to the one who is able to save him from death with strong crying and tears when he had offered them up. Then he was heard because of his piety. And so again, uh, having been heard then, as a son, the writer of Hebrews says, he, he learned uh, from the things that he suffered, obedience and being perfected. He became to all who obey a source of eternal salvation, being designated by God a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. In verses uh, 7 through, nine, or through 10 of Hebrews chapter 5, he was perfected as a son in the sense not that he needed perfection because he was perfect as the God-man in terms of, of sin, but he was perfected in terms of becoming the source of eternal salvation. That's the teaching of the writer of Hebrews. It was perfected to be our Savior, the source of salvation for us. And it is significant when we think about the victory that Christ brings in his suffering as the suffering servant. Paul refers to this very text in Romans chapter 8, our text in Isaiah, when he's talking about what we now have in Jesus Christ. And he reads these words or writes these words, uh, What shall we say to these things? Verse 31 of Romans 8. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who spared not his own Son, but delivered him on behalf of all of us, shall he not also with him freely give to us all things? Who will call anything to charge against the elect of God? God is the one who justifies. And this is taking us back then to that text in Isaiah chapter 50 verse 8. Who is the one who condemns? Who can condemn us now? Christ Jesus is the one who died and rather being raised who is also at the right hand of God and who also makes intercession for us. And so Jesus was heard in his suffering in the resurrection and now having died and having been raised and now being seated at the right hand of God and making intercession for us, Paul, alluding back to this text in Isaiah 50, says, Who will call anything to charge now against the elect of God? We're identified with Christ. We're one with him now because of his suffering and ultimate vicarious atonement for us. We now are in him. And so we no longer stand under condemnation by Satan or the demons or anyone. And nothing then can sever us from that love which is in Jesus Christ. Uh, because he was willing to become our substitute. Paul goes on uh, in Romans to say, Then what can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall affliction or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is written, on account of you we are killed all the day. We are counted as sheep of the slaughter. But in all these things we super conquer through the one who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise the Lord that as our suffering servant, he was willing to suffer the reproaches that he did on our behalf and then go to Calvary and become our atonement, suffering in our stead 
so that he pays our penalty. And as a result, we are now united with him and nothing can ever separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord.